Good morning. Okay, so we are going to be here in Leviticus and we're going to open in prayer. So let's go ahead and open in prayer. Um, probably should have just left that right where it was at. Okay, here we go. Okay. Lord, I just thank you for today. I thank you that um, you've given us this time to be in your word. Lord, I ask that you would bless this day. Help us to acknowledge you in everything we say and do. Help us to love you and to love others and to be a good example of that love at all times, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So here we go. We're in Leviticus 19, and we're starting with the Lord is holy. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make for yourselves any gods of cast metal. I am the Lord your God. So God's not saying we have to be perfect. God is saying we need to strive to be holy. Why? Because he is holy. Because if we want to try to be holy, we can do it through him. And he's giving us a list, and these are the Ten Commandments, the things that we need to try to live our life by. We cannot do it. We will fall short. We will fail. That's why we need a Savior. So these things are not meant to cause us to feel down and negative but to cause us to feel positive that we don't have to do these on our own but that through god we can okay verse five when you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings to the lord you shall offer it so that you may be accepted it shall be eaten the same day you offer it or on the day after and anything left over until the third day shall be burned up by the fire if it is eaten at all on the third day it is tainted it will not be accepted, and everyone who eats it shall bear this iniquity, because he has profaned what is holy to the Lord, and that person shall be cut off from his people. It's serious. God isn't joking here. He's not saying you could do whatever you want to do. He's giving you very clear instructions as to what you can and cannot do. Love your neighbor as yourself. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge, Neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest, and you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. So he's saying don't take everything. Leave what's left over for those that are in need. You shall not steal, you shall not deal falsely, you shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. God is being very clear how we need to act. There's no confusion as to what's okay and what's not okay. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wagers of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. He's asking you to do what's right. Not what you think is right, not what you think should be done, but what is right. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall not reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You shall keep my statutes, he's saying. You shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your cattle breed with a different kind. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed, nor shall you wear a garment of cloth made of two kinds of material. If a man lies sexually with a woman who is a slave assigned to another man, and not yet ransomed or given her freedom, 
a distinction shall be made. They shall not be put to death because she was not free. But he shall bring his compensation to the Lord to the entrance of the tent of meeting, a ram for a guilt offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering before the Lord for his sin that he has committed. And he shall be forgiven for the sin that he has committed. And when you come into the land and plant any kind of tree for food, then you shall regard its fruit as forbidden. Three years it shall be forbidden to you. It must not be eaten. And in the fourth year, all its fruit shall be holy. An offering of praise to the Lord. But in the fifth year, you may eat of its fruit to increase its yield for you. I am the Lord your God. Now that seems harsh right there with the tree, but... Honestly, it's giving the tree time to produce to make its fruit the best. And if you do that, it will cause the fruit to be better than if you took it from the very beginning. You shall not eat any flesh with the blood in it. You shall not interp interpret omens or tell fortunes. You shall not round off the hair on your temples or mar the edges of your beard. You shall not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves. I am the Lord. Now let's remember where we are during the time of what he's saying. He's speaking to the Israelites. He's setting them apart as he's preparing them to go into a foreign land. They need to not take on the customs of those around them. They need to follow his rules and his laws so they are a separated people. Now, we are no longer under this law. These are civil laws. These are laws for the Israelites of that time because he needed them to stay separated. But salvation is for all mankind now. It is not just for the Jews, and we are not under these laws. Hence why I do have tattoos. And I would love to discuss that in more detail with anybody that has any um, questions on that. Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute, lest the land fall into prostitution and the land become full of depravity. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I and the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out. So make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. God is giving you direction of what you can and can't do. God is giving you direction of who you should and should not seek. God is giving you direction as what to, how to raise your children and how not to raise your children. He's giving them clear direction for the Israelites of that time and that day that are needing to live among a people but be separated from them. When a stranger sojourns with you in your land, you shall do him no wrong. You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you and you shall love him as yourself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You shall do no wrong in judgment, in measures of length or weight or quantity. You shall have just balances, just weights, a just effa, and a just hin. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and you shall observe all my statutes and all my rules and do them. I am the Lord. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Say to the people of Israel, we're in chapter 20 now, Any one of the people of Israel or the strangers who sojourn in Israel, who gives any of his children to Molech, shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I myself will set my face against the man and will cut him off from among his people, because he has given one of his children to Molech to make my sanctuary unclean and to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land do at all close their eyes to that man when he gives one of his children to Molech and do not put him to death, then I will set my face against that man and against his clan and will cut them off from among their people, him and all who follow him in whoring after Molech. It's just as bad to turn a blind eye to sin than to commit the sin itself. We need to stand up for what's right. We need to do what God's called us to do. If a person turns to mediums and necromancers whoring after them, 
I will set my face against that person and I will cut him off from among his people. Consecrate yourselves therefore and be holy for I the Lord your God. Keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. For anyone who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. His blood shall be upon him. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. If a man lies with his father's wife, he has uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. If a man lies with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have committed perversion. Their blood is upon them. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. If a man takes a woman and her mother also, and it, it is depravity, he and they shall be burned with fire, that there may be no depravity among you. If a man lies with an animal, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall kill the animal. If a woman approaches any animal and lies with it, you shall kill the woman and the animal. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. If a man takes his sister and a daughter of his father or a daughter of his mother and sees her nakedness and she sees his nakedness, it is a disgrace. And they shall be cut off in the sight of the children of their people. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness and he shall bear his iniquity. If a man lies with a woman during her menstrual period and covers her nakedness, he has made her naked, made naked her fountain, and she has uncovered the fountain of her blood. Both of them shall be cut off from among their people. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister or of your father's sister. For this is to make naked one's relative. They shall bear their iniquity. If a man lies with his uncle's wife, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness. They shall bear their sin. They shall be childless. If a man takes his brother's wife, it is impurity. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. And they shall be childless. God has given you very specific instructions to the people of what they should and shouldn't do. And you see that he's wanting them to be a separated people. So now we go on to Mark 8. The Pharisees demand a sign. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit. This is Jesus. Good morning. And said, why does this generation seek a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, got into a boat again, and went to the other side. He didn't give a, a sign because he is the sign. He has been pointing to who and what God is. And they're missing the sign. Now they had forgotten to bring bread and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them saying, watch out. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. They think it's really because of the actual bread that he's talking about leaven. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes do you not see and having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? Then he said to them, then they said to him, 12. And the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, seven. And he said to them, do you not yet understand? It wasn't about the material bread. He is the bread. He is the life. He is what they're looking for, not the world. And they just don't get it yet. They came to Bethsaida in verse 22, and some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. 
And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. And he sent him to his home, saying, do not even enter the village. Jesus could have just said, be healed. Jesus could have touched him and said, be healed. Jesus went through the process of the making of the mud and the spitting of his hands, of the seeing a little bit and then seeing more for this man because it's what he needed at this point in time because God gives us all exactly what we need when we need it. And this is what this man needed. And not just maybe for himself, but for us to see that all healing wasn't the same. God met each person individually the way they needed to be met. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they told him John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others say one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, you are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him because it wasn't time yet. And when God gives us direction, we need to follow it. Even when we don't think, that's what we should do. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. See, this is what happens when Jesus gives them a little bit, gives them props for what they know, then we think we know everything, right? But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father, with the holy angels. Don't be ashamed of God. God was not ashamed of you. God loved you enough to die on the cross for you in Jesus Christ. And he did that so he could rise again, so he could offer us hope of heaven. Jesus Christ was not ashamed of you. Don't be ashamed of him. Okay, so now we're in Psalms 42. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the strong and lead them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and shouts of praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why? Are you cast down, O oh, my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you. From the land of Jordan and from Hermon, from Mount Mizar, deep calls to deep. At the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By the day, by day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is within me. He's getting the comfort from the Lord that he needs. A prayer to the God of my life. 
I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me. While they say to me all the day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. He's not pretending to be okay. He's not pretending that everything's all right. He's being honest with God and saying, God, my enemy is coming against me. He's putting me down. He's making me feel bad. He's making me question my love for you and my walk with you. And I say, hope in God. I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Because he knows he may not feel it right now. But that God is God and he is not. And if he continues to hope and trust the love and the provision and the refuge and the strength from the Lord will again come upon him. Proverbs 10, 17. Whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life, but he who rejects reproof leads others astray. Don't reject reproof. I had a man last week that was wanting to reprove all of my teaching. And I was fine with his different opinion. That was okay. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. When his reproof became threatening to not just me, which doesn't bother me as much as when he was threatening other people that were listening. We're supposed to be able to give an answer in every and any situation but with gentleness and love. If we cannot give our answers in gentleness and love, then we shouldn't be saying anything at all. And I wasn't offended when he came against me because he wasn't coming against me. He was coming against God because my answers were not my own, but they were God's word. But when you come against other people, they're not prepared to give an answer to you in the hurtful way that you're speaking. That is not God's best. And even if you're trying to say it, in the name of God, that's not who God is. So don't misrepresent God. So I did have to block him. And that was at my husband's discretion. So that's why I did it. But I hope you guys have a blessed day. I hope you understand that Jesus loves you. That he died for you. That he rose again so you have a hope of heaven. That you have a purpose. That he has a plan for you. That your best is you loving God. Because God loves you. So love God, love others, be a blessing, receive blessing, and have a very blessed day. Talk to you guys later.